Hello, my name's Hal Axler. I'm the executive director of the Broward County Film Society, and we're here at Cinema Paradiso, where we just had our first Grindhouse Cinema event. I'm done. I'm done. I know what to really put your act together. <laughs> Where do you hear this? It'll kill you. <laughs> and I'm here with the director of our film this evening, William Griffey. Good evening. Good evening, Hal. Uh, to you, you can call me Bill. Great. We're here with Bill Griffey. So about a year and a half ago, Quentin Tarantino came out with the film Grindhouse. That was a term that not a lot of people knew. Uh, tell us about Grindhouse Theater. Well, Grindhouse, you know, originally was burlesque theaters. And then in the 50s, they all started, uh, the live shows started uh, closing. So the neighborhood theaters took them over. And uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino is a very big fan of uh, these type of films and so he's part owner of a theater out in Los Angeles called the New Beverly and uh, they were kind enough to invite me out a couple months ago and show two of my films uh, called Impulse with William Shatner and then one called Stanley uh, which was a suspense film so uh, it was really a, a great evening there were about, the theater was packed and and what uh, I liked was uh, so many film students came and uh, were asking questions. And uh, so uh, we just had a good evening, and uh, I hope the people enjoyed the films and they learned a little bit uh, about filmmaking. And the film we played tonight was Mako Jaws of Death, which came out right after Jaws. What's the story behind this film and Steven Spielberg's Jaws? Well, I uh, wrote that story years before Jaws was uh, ever thought of by Universal. And nobody wanted to back the film, so I put it in the drawer and I went on to other films. When Jaws was released by Universal, it was like a uh, frenzy. Life magazine, Time magazine, everything was sharks, sharks, sharks. And when that happened, and, you know, my phone rang off the hook because distributors and investors that had seen my uh, story, they were throwing money at me. So, so we immediately shot it. And then we, uh, when we finished shooting, Universal had not released Jaws in Europe, but uh, this giant publicity campaign was on. So we quick edited a seven-minute promo reel, went to Europe and uh, and booked the thing and pre-sold it because in, in distribution you pre-sell Germany and France and Italy, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So we had our money back before I even finished editing the film. So uh, a lot of people said, well, you ripped off the Jaws, but uh, the only thing I uh, ripped off was their publicity department. I didn't rip off the actual uh, storyline. How do you think uh, watching a low-budget film like the uh, most of the Grindhouse films, how is that beneficial for a film student of today? Well, it, with uh, small-budget films like the one we showed tonight, Mako Jaws of Death, was literally we shot in three weeks. So on uh, my record, I did a film which uh, I, I wrote in 24 hours, the screenplay, and I ended up directing it uh, called Death Curse of Tartu, which is an old... Uh, horror movie we did and I shot that in seven days so you know what I always tell the students that filmmaking it's an art but it's a commercial art and nobody hands you fifty thousand a hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars unless they want their money back that's a hell of a responsibility and you better bring that picture in on budget essentially the grindhouse cinema is the predecessor of today's independent films, which obviously with the Broward County Film Society is a big part of what we program here. How do you relate today's independent film with what you are doing? Well, I think the only difference is from a technical standpoint. It's so simple to make a movie today compared to when I made the first movie, The Checkered Flag, the camera weighed 300 pounds. We had big 35 millimeter magna sinks for the sound. It was a nightmare, a nightmare. Now everything is digital, everything's computerized, and it's very simple. And 
I mean, uh, young filmmakers have an excellent chance with, you know, high definition digital cameras and so forth, and you got a big responsibility. So the first couple of films, you've got to do a super commercial film that makes money. If you don't, you know, you're going to end up with the greatest, most expensive home movie ever made. After you've made a couple of films, then you can make the, uh, the one that really is at your heart. Bill, with all your experience and uh, really a true veteran, for a local filmmaker here in South Florida who has a project that they've either made or they have on the drawing board, what steps do you recommend they take to get their film uh, shot, distributed, and seen out there in the world? Well, you know, distribution is the key to it, and uh, distributors are like a bunch of sharks circling, waiting for somebody to show up with a film and gobble them up. See, so getting distribution is not the big problem. Seeing money back is the problem. Like on Ceasefire, I ended up with uh, one company doing theatrical only. I ended up with about 20 other distributors, and we, uh, you know, did foreign sales. Uh, HBO alone gave us the cost of the film back. So if you hand your whole package to one you know, uh, one entity or one distributor, they're gonna they're gonna rape you. It's, that's, it's something that you gotta really guard yourself against. And I've I've uh, helped a lot of young filmmakers try to get through all of those uh, shark infested waters. Sounds like the plot of the movie we saw today. <laughs> well, we're gonna be doing Grindhouse Cinema monthly here at Cinema Paradiso. And you can find out information on all the upcoming events on our website, www.fliff.com. That's F-L-I-F-F. -F. And, um, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, it's been a real pleasure um, for Underlab Studios and the uh, Broward County Film Society. I'm Hal Axler.